Hello, and welcome to the Xilinx Quick Take video, where we will cover the ultra-fast design methodology for time enclosure. Following the guidelines in this methodology will enable you to achieve sign-off quality XDC constraints for time enclosure. This methodology will also enable you to achieve time enclosure significantly faster, irrespective of the complexity of the design. This Quick Take assumes you know how to write XDC constraints for STA analysis. Please refer to other Quick Take videos if you need to learn how to write XDC constraints. So let's get started. First, we'll review the reasons why time and constraints need to be clean. Next, we will review the ultra-fast design methodology for time enclosure, in which we will cover baseline, or core time enclosure, followed by I.O. and the last mile of time enclosure. Finally, we'll cover the sign-off quality timing constraints, what it means and how to get there quickly and reliably. This ultra-fast design methodology will enable you to converge on timing closure faster and make sure your timing constraints are clean and of sign-off quality for production. Why should timing constraints be clean? How do we get to timing constraints that are clean and of sign-off quality? These are a few questions we'll address in this session. In a design where constraints are missing, be it clocks or I.O., the tool will analyze those paths optimistically. Violations will not be reported and the hardware may not work. When paths are constrained incorrectly, the tool will spend a lot of time optimizing areas of the design that are not really critical. The reported violations, since they aren't really critical, will not be the reason why the hardware is failing or the reported failures may not result in any failures in the hardware at all. In either of these instances it is not a good outcome and system debug is a nightmare. Incorrect timing violations may cause wrong hold violations resulting in long run times. Setup violations are caused because non-critical paths are optimized or there is a missing constraint that is showing up as a setup violation. Also, users need to keep in mind that Vivado will try to fix hold violations first because designs with hold violations won't work on hardware. This design methodology will guide you to create clean timing constraints. We have seen why timing constraints need to be clean, but how do you create good constraints? Follow these four simple steps. First, ensure that all the clocks are correctly constrained. Refer to the quick take video on creating clock constraints. Second, now that the clocks are all constrained, examine their relationships and ensure that CDC paths are safe and either add clock group constraints or set max delay data path only constraints. Second, now that the clocks are all constrained, examine their relationships and ensure that CDC paths are safe and either add clock group constraints or set max delay data path only constraints. Please refer to the quick take video on advanced exceptions if you need more information regarding exception constraints. Keep in mind that if you add clock group constraints or false path constraints, then set max delay data path only, constraints will be ignored because clock group and false path constraints have a higher priority than the set max delay data path only constraints. The first two steps are what we call baseline constraints, and they cover upwards of 95% of the paths in a typical design. In the next few slides, we will show how to use the Vivado design software to develop, debug, and validate these constraints. Getting the baseline constraints correct is a very important step in the methodology. Third, once the design is properly baselined, we continue towards completing our sign-off quality constraints by adding I.O. constraints from the XDC language templates available in the Vivado design software. Ensure that all the IOs are constrained accurately. If necessary, consult your board or system architect before finalizing the IO timing constraints. Understand the device architecture as well so that proper pin planning can be done before the board is finalized. Finally, add exception constraints to your design. Exception constraints can be added to relax timing as needed. Usually, if the design is properly baselined, additional exception constraints aren't needed. Exception constraints include clock groups, 
false paths, multi-cycle paths, min-max delay constraints, and set case analysis constraints. Adding exception constraints will ensure that the tool focuses on the critical areas of the design and optimize the design for speed, performance, and power. Refer to the quick take video on advanced exception constraints if needed. IP cores that are added from the IP catalog often have constraints that come with them. These are automatically added to the design. The user doesn't have to do anything else. Older cores, however, that were generated in CoreGen typically do not have constraints embedded in the netlist. Users will want to review the CoreGen cores and add constraints for those cores as needed. Use the Vivado Design Software's debug capabilities to validate the constraints after each step. Add and debug constraints after synthesis. The ultra-fast design methodology for timing closure is an iterative process in which we prioritize and close one issue at a time. Core, I.O., and then fine-tune those constraints in order to achieve timing closure that is sign-off quality. Developing and debugging your constraints after synthesis is strongly recommended. Post-synthesis analysis is faster and of higher impact than if you were trying to develop or debug after place and route. While this methodology strongly recommends you to apply and debug constraints after synthesis, you should also run place and route to fine-tune constraints due to pipelining, placement, or other issues. Xilinx recommends you start with the simplest or baseline set of constraints. Baseline constraints are easily written and debugged like clocks, clock relationships, false paths on static signals, and known multi-cycle paths. Why start with the baseline constraints? Because 90% of the time, the problem lies in the core, in internal FMAX or flip-flop timing. If we can get the baseline constraints correct, then we have solved 90 to 95% of the problem. Baseline constraints ensure that core timing constraints are clean. Iterate on the baseline constraints in a post-synthesis netlist until core timing is clean. You may have to add false paths to static signals in the design or paths that are multi-cycle. Remember to add multi-cycle path constraints for both setup and hold. If after synthesis the core timing is clean, proceed to the implementation stage to ensure that after place and route, core timing is still clean. Modify the constraints or the RTL, for, for example adding pipeline stages, and run synthesis and implementation again until the core timing is clean. Once the baseline constraints are stable, add I.O. constraints that are reasonable and accurate. Use the XDC language template in the Vivado design software to guide you with the constraint development. Again, use the Vivado design software's debug capability to correct issues. If necessary, speak to the board or system designer to correct I.O. timing closure issues. Again, constraining and debugging I.O. constraints after synthesis is strongly encouraged. Once you have a good, clean set of I.O. constraints, proceed to implementation to ensure that after place and route, I.O. timing is still clean. The final stage of the ultra-fast design methodology is to fine-tune constraints in areas of the design that are really hard to meet timing. You may have to run place and route to find these issues. In this stage, you may have to add or modify clocks, add exception constraints, add placement constraints, or the design might need minor floor planning in order to meet timing. Following this methodology will result in speedier convergence for the timing constraints that are of sign off quality that is not only complete but more importantly correct. Over the next few slides we will cover each of these in more detail. Baseline constraint development starts by ensuring that all clocks in the design are properly constrained. These include primary or base clocks, generated clocks, and external feedback clocks. Fado will automatically derive MMCM or PLL generated clocks, so you only have to ensure that user generated divide by clocks are correctly constrained. Ensuring all the clocks are correctly constrained means you'll have solved over 90% of the problem. In this stage, you don't need to constrain IOs. Vivado design software will not optimize IOs if they are not constrained, and at this stage we don't really care about IO timing. IO timing 
is not of concern at this stage because the board or system architecture may not be finalized. Add I.O. constraints only if they are valid. Now that all the clocks are properly defined and validated, the next step is to review the clock interactions and define clock relationships. It is important to define clock relationships, asynchronous or logically or physically exclusive, so that the proper CDC analysis is done. The Vivado designed software to identify clock relationships and to set the clock groups. Refer to the quick take videos titled Advanced Exceptions if you need help in this area. The first step for writing good XDC timing constraints is to create all the primary and generated clocks in the design. You must define the primary clocks at the top level port by using the get ports attribute. The Vivado design software will automatically derive MMCP and PLL generated clocks. Ensure that all user generated clocks, divide by clocks, are correctly identified and constrained. Use the language and XDC template if you need assistance. For example, in the tickle console, type create clock help or create generated clock help to gather more information on a command. To ensure that the clocks are correctly constrained, use report clocks or report clock networks. Ensure that in the report clocks report that all clocks have either a P for propagated, for primary clocks, and a P and a G for generated, for generated clocks. In the Report Clock Networks report, ensure that all clock networks are constrained. Another useful command to identify endpoints or flip-flops that have no clocks is the Check Timing command. Before we analyze and constrain clock interactions, we need to understand what are safe and unsafe CDC paths. A safe CDC path is one in which the source and destination clocks share a common primary clock, or the clocks are synchronous. The paths are safe in the sense that the timing relationship between the clocks can be inferred. Such a transfer is shown in Figure 1. An unsafe CDC path is one in which the source and destination clocks do not share a common primary clock, or the clocks are asynchronous. In an unsafe CDC path, the timing relationship is unknown. This kind of transfer is shown in Figure 2. For an unsafe CDC path, you will need to ensure proper fail-safe mechanisms like a FIFO or a synchronizer is present. Now that we understand safe and unsafe CDC paths, run the report clock interaction command to examine various CDC paths in your design. We will use this report to analyze debug, and constrain CDC paths in the design. We can cut analysis of inner clock paths by using clock groups or false path constraints if there are synchronizers or FIFOs or other fail-safe mechanisms in the design. This can be done directly in the clock interaction report by right-clicking on the transfer and selecting the set clock groups or set false path. Analysis of inner clock paths can also be constrained by using the set max delay data path only constraint. In this case, you should not apply the clock group or the false path constraint. After applying either the clock exception constraint or the set max delay data path only constraints, rerun the clock interaction report to observe, debug, and validate the constraints. Review the clock interaction report and ensure there are no unexpanded clocks in the design. If there are issues, review the clock constraints and correct them. Also, look for any unreasonable path requirements, like the 20 PS requirement shown. If there are paths with unreasonable path requirements, then you probably need to review the clock constraints or apply correct multicycle path constraints. Finally, add other exception constraints like false paths for static signals in your design. By this stage, you should have a very good set of baseline constraints consisting of all the clocks in the design and correct clock relationships. If you have also added a few obvious false paths and multicycle paths, then you are well into the game.
You should have also taken care of CDC by making sure that the paths across clock domains are safe by using either synchronizer or a FIFO or other structures to prevent metastability. The first place you should look when you start creating I.O. constraints is the XDC language templates in Vivado. There are simple templates available for system synchronous interfaces, source synchronous edge align interfaces, source synchronous center align interfaces, SDR interfaces, and DDR interfaces. Before spending a lot of time trying to derive these constraints on your own, take advantage of these Xilinx created templates to reduce your time to market. Before we start applying I.O. constraints, make sure the constraints are valid and reasonable. Incorrect and invalid I.O. constraints will result in invalid analysis. At this stage, a few iterations will be needed, so add I.O. constraints on a per-interface basis if necessary. Debug and validate the constraints post-synthesis. Run place and route. And after you have validated the constraints to make sure that the I.O. constraints didn't break timing after place and route, as well as due to clock latency and skew. Fine-tune I.O. constraints as necessary. By now you should have more or less clean core and I.O. timing. There may be areas in the design that still fail to meet timing either due to constraint changes caused by board or architecture changes, or it could be due to RTL changes causing timing closure issues. The design might need floor planning, or you added pipeline stages to increase performance and clock frequency has increased. Whatever the reason, you'll still have to fine tune the constraints, add or modify clocks or exception constraints, or even add placement or floor planning constraints. These are typically the last few paths that are really difficult to close timing and you may have to iterate either at the synthesis level or in each stage of the implementation level. Add and validate the constraints at the appropriate level by running various report commands. At each stage, timing should converge and if changes to the constraints are needed, modify them. Continue your iteration of the design through the Vivado design software until RTL and XDC constraints are frozen and timing closure is achieved. The RTL and XDC are a sign of quality when no new RTL bugs are identified. Verification is complete, timing is met, and timing related changes to the XDC file are no longer needed. At this stage, Xilinx recommends a clean compile of synthesis and implementation for the production build. A clean compile is recommended whenever RTL or constraints are modified. The ultra-fast design methodology for timing closure accelerates timing convergence because most of the analysis is done on a post-synthesis netlist. Creating a baseline constraint eases core timing closure, followed by I.O. and fine-tuning constraints on paths that are difficult to close. The methodology is an iterative process and eases the creation, debug, and validation of constraints because it solves one issue at a time. Proceed to clean and final build of the design once the RTL is frozen. The verification and validation tests are complete in order to get the sign-off quality constraints. Thanks for watching.